demonstrating how you can create this vector banner with text using Adobe Illustrator. So I'll go ahead and get started here in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to open up a new document. I'm going to set it to 1280 by 1280 pixels. And then I just want to set up the document so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to go up here where it says view and where it says snap to pixel. I'll turn that off. In fact, where it says view, the only thing we want visible or checked rather is snap to point. And then we'll go over to window to make sure we have all of these panels open. I'm going to choose control, align, color, and transparency. And those are the three or four boxes you'll want checked there. So the first thing we're going to do is create some text. So I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm going to click on the canvas to add some uh, dummy text there. And I'm going to choose a different font here. The font I'm going to use is called Lead Gothic, but you could use whatever font you'd like. And then I'm just going to write banner text. You can type whatever you'd like. I'm just using placeholder text for this. Then we'll go back to the select tool. And I'm just going to hold shift and alt and grab one of these corners over here to scale this thing up. And what I want to do now is come over to the align panel and I'm going to set the align to relative to the artboard. And I'm just going to center it up on the artboard using the horizontal and vertical axes. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and just create a big old rectangle going over the text object, about that big like that. And I'll set the color of this to red. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to grab the select tool. Let me click on it again. Or actually, uh, I want to center this up on the page again using the uh, vertical and horizontal axis. And now I want to click off of it to deselect everything. I want to click on just this red square right here, or this rectangle, and where it says opacity, I'm going to bring that down about in half just so I can see where the text is beneath it. And then I'll click off of that to deselect everything. And now I'm going to grab the pen tool, and I'm going to create a line going straight through here. So I'm going to click outside of the red rectangle, uh, a little bit above the text up here. Go ahead and click. And then hold shift and bring that line straight through the object to the other side, and then click again, and then just hit enter on the keyboard. And now I want to switch around the fill and the stroke color. So just go ahead and click that rotate icon to swap those around. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click and hold on the pen tool so we get the flyout menu. And I'm going to choose where it says anchor point tool. That's the tool we want to use here. I'm just going to click and drag this line and bring it up like that. And once we click and drag the line, we're going to get these little handles. You can click and drag these handles to adjust the line. We want to create a nice smooth fluid line that goes up, that curves upward, and then dips down and goes back to the baseline right there. So I'm just going to adjust these uh, handles until I get what I'm looking for right there. Something like that looks good. We just want a nice, simple, fluid line like that. And once we've done that, I'm going to go back to the Select tool, and I'm going to click and drag that line, and then hold Shift and Alt, and just click and drag it down about to... Uh, the bot about to where the bottom of the text is, right about there. And then I'm going to hold shift, click on the original line so we have them both selected. And I just want to make sure we have them centered on the uh, artboard over here. So I'm going to center them on the horizontal axis. And then I'll go to uh, object, path, outline, stroke. And then I'll hold shift, click on the red object, and go to the shape builder tool, which is over here. And with the Shape Builder tool, I want to hold Alt on the keyboard and click on this area to delete that. And I'll do the same thing down here. Hold Alt, hold alt click on that area to delete that. And now we can go back to the Select tool. We can click off of this to deselect everything. I'm going to take this line up here and press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. I'll take this line down here, press Delete to get rid of that. And what we have right here, this is going to be the shape that our, uh, our banner is going to be. As you can see here, it kind of takes that curved shape. This is the beginning of that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this object and I'm just going to click and drag it down and then I'm going to hold shift and alt so we get a copy of it down here. And I'm going to go back to the rectangles tool and I'm going to create a rectangle going over the text that's about the same width as the text, roughly. Try to get it as close as possible, something like that. And uh, once we've done that, I'm just going to center that up on the horizontal axis again. Go back to the select tool. Hold shift, click on the red striped shape beneath it, and come over to the Pathfinder tab. If you don't have this visible, just go to Window and choose Pathfinder, and it should become visible. And from the Pathfinder menu, we want to choose uh, Intersect. And we're going to create an intersected area like that. And what I want to do now is I want to take the opacity of this and bring this down a little bit so I can see the text beneath it. 
And then I'll just take this and move this up. I'm going to hold shift so it locks it onto the vertical axis. We're going to take this text and make it take the shape of this object right here. So I'm going to click on the text and then hold shift and click on this red object and go to object, envelope distort, make with top object. And it's going to flow the text into that shape nicely as you see there. And what we want to do now is finalize that so this, this becomes an object that we could work with further and change the colors with and everything. So to do that, I'll go to object, envelope distort, and we're going to choose expand. And now we can edit that further. So with that selected, I'm going to go back to the align menu and just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis as we did previously. And I'm going to take this object down here and I'm going to center that up on the vertical and horizontal axis as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click off of everything to deselect everything. I want to make this red banner a little higher so we have some padding between the, the edge of the banner and the text. So I'm going to click on just this red banner right here and I'm going to go to the uh, direct selection tool. And I'm going to click on this top node up here in the top left. And then I'm going to hold shift, click on this node over here. While still holding shift, click on this node over here. And then while still holding shift, this node over here. Wherever there's a node on the top row, just go ahead and click it so we have all of them selected. And then I'm just going to click and drag it up. And then while holding shift, so it locks it onto the vertical axis. Maybe about that high. That's pretty good. And once we've done that, we can just go back to the select tool and center that up on the vertical axis. And now we can click off of the deselect everything. So we have the banner portion made. What we need to do is create these little flaps here on the side. To do that, what I first want to do is create a duplicate copy of this red banner. So I'm going to click and drag that down, hold shift and alt so it creates a new copy and, and puts it down there like that. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this blue. And let me, let me just move this up actually. Make sure to hold shift on the keyboard so that it locks it onto the vertical axis. I'm going to move this slightly beneath the red object and then I'm going to right click that and go to arrange, send to the back. And what I'll do next is I'll go back to the rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle going over the text that's a little bit wider than the text so that it leaves some padding in there. You might want to even go to the opacity and bring that down so you can see where the text is relative to that rectangle and maybe make that a little wider. That's looking good. Once that's done, I'm just going to center that up on the uh, horizontal align, the horizontal axis like that. I'll go back to the select tool. With that selected, I'll hold shift and click on the red shape and go back to the Pathfinder menu and choose intersection again. So we end up with that right there. Uh, let me just make that red so it, we can differentiate it from everything else. And what we want to do next is we just want to cut out a, a portion of this uh, blue object right here. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to create another rectangle going in here that's a little less, a little smaller than the red shape in width, about that much. Let me, again, make the opacity, bring the opacity down so we can see it. Let me go back to the select tool. Again, this is not quite as wide as the other red shape, which is what we're looking for here. And again, I'll go back to the align menu, center it up on the vertical axis, hold shift, click on the blue shape, and then go back to the pathfinder menu and choose, this time we're going to choose minus front. So we end up with that right there. And what we want to do next is just right click on that and go to arrange, send to the back. And what we're going to do next actually is we're going to take this red object right here and we're just going to lower that one step so it goes beneath the text. So I'm just going to hold control on the keyboard and click on the left bracket key so it lowers it one step. And then we can click on this text and I'm just going to make that white. So we have white text there. So what we want to do next is just add some little indents here to each side of the banner. As you see, I've done here this little bit of a, like an indent. So it kind of looks like a tail. Uh, to do that, I'm going to click and hold on the uh, anchor point tool until we get the add, add anchor point tool. That's what we want. And I'm just going to come over here and click on this edge over here somewhere about in the center to add a new anchor point in there. We'll do the same thing over here. Click and click on that left, right edge to add an anchor point in there. Then we'll go to the uh, direct selection tool. Click on just that node right there and then just bring that in a little bit like that. We'll do the same thing over here. Click on that object and then click on just that node and then just bring that in a little bit like that. And now what we can do is we can go to the select tool. Let me click on this. We want to ungroup this object. So we'll go to object, ungroup, click off of it to deselect everything. 
And I want to take this object on the right and just click and drag this up a little bit. Just make sure to hold shift after you start clicking and dragging so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. I want to bring that up about that far. Maybe I want to bring that down a little further as well. And that's looking pretty good right there. So I'm going to click off of that to deselect everything. What I'm going to do now is add um, makeshift shadows here, which really helps sell the uh, appearance of the uh, banner. So to do that, I'm going to click and hold on the add anchor point tool so we can get back to the pen tool, which is up top here. And I'm going to first I'm going to start on the, on the left side over here. I'm going to snap to this bottom left corner of the red shape, bring the line up to here, snap to this corner. And then I want to bring this over to the left outside of the blue shape up here, maybe about that far, and then back to the starting point. And I want to make that black. And down here, I'm going to create another object. Let me zoom in on this so you can see it better. I'm going to hold Alt and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to snap to this corner right here, hold Shift and lock it so it goes straight up on the vertical axis, put a point up here in the center of this object, snap to this corner, and back to the starting point. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the Select tool. I'm going to take this object right here, and I just want to lower that a couple of steps so it goes beneath the red object. So I'm going to hold Control and click the left bracket a couple of times until it lowers. And you'll notice now it's beneath the red object there, which is what we're going for. And let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this object right here, and I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag that to create a new copy. And I just want to flip this around or rotate it around actually 180 degrees. So I'm going to bring the cursor to the top right edge of the object until it turns into a rotate icon and then just click and drag it around like that and then just hold shift so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that and then hold control on the keyboard grab this node up top and just snap it onto this top right edge top right corner of that red object right there and then we'll go back to the pen tool i'm going to create another object right here First, let's deselect everything. Let's go to Control, Shift, and A to deselect everything. I'm going to snap to this corner. Again, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. Snap to this corner. Hold Shift. Bring it straight into this object. Snap to this corner. Back to the starting point. And again, we want to lower this beneath the red object. So I'm going to hit Control, left bracket key a few times until it goes. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Let me zoom out. So what I want to do now is just trim off the edges of these shapes. So to do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Select tool. I'm going to click and drag over everything. And I'm going to uh, go to the Shape Builder tool. And then I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and click on this segment right here to delete that. And click on this segment right here to delete that. And click on this segment over here to delete that and then this one over here to get rid of that. And what we could do now is go back to the Select tool, click off of it to deselect everything. I want to take this object and press Delete to get rid of that. Take this object, press Delete to get rid of that. And I want to grab these objects underneath the banner here. So I'm going to click on it, but it's going to grab the red object because, it, because it's layered on top. So I'm going to hold Control and click again until it grabs that object. And you'll know you have it grabbed when there's a bounding box placed around it and the color of it shows up in your color picker here. And I'll just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Let me do this again for this object. Hold Alt. I mean, I'm sorry, Control. Press Delete to get rid of that. Do the same thing over here. We're just holding Control and clicking and then pressing Delete to get rid of it. And there we go. So what we want to do now is, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click and drag over everything and I'm going to bring the opacity of it all the way up. And let me hold shift and click on the text just to deselect it so we have these three objects selected. I want to give these all one consistent color. And the color that I used for this uh, thumbnail mock-up is, um, let me double click. Let me double click the color box right here. I'm just going to type it in. You can make this any color you'd want, obviously. I'm just going to use FF002A. Go ahead and click OK. And what we want to do now is... Um, it's starting to look pretty good. I just want to take this node down here and just shrink that a little bit, bring the height down. Oh, you know what? Let me undo that. Control Z. We want to click and drag over everything first before we do that. So we have the text selected as well. I'm just going to click and drag that up like that to make that a little, bring down the height a little bit. That right there looks pretty good. And if you notice in this thumbnail, I, I sheared it to the right a little bit. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the scaling tool, click and hold on that until you get the flyout menu. Choose shear. 
and then just click and drag this over to the right and then hold shift so it locks it onto that horizontal axis like that and over to the right just like that that looks perfect and what I'll do now is let me go to the select tool and click off of it to deselect everything the design is finished, but it doesn't quite look right unless it's up against a dark background the way that the, um, the negative space here is formed. So in order for this to really uh, look convincing as shadow is being casted over the corners of the banner, what we're going to have to do is create a darker background than the banner itself. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a rectangle going over the whole thing. I'm going to make this a dark shade of blue, something like that. And I'm going to lower it to the bottom by holding control, shift, and then hitting the left bracket key. And now I can go back to the select tool and click off of everything. And as you can see, we are finished. We have created our vector banner with text using Adobe Illustrator. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.